to me. Information, news, and entertainment on demand. WSRadio.com. Welcome to the Mary Goulet Show, cultivating a rich interior. Now, here's Mary. Welcome to the program. I'm Mary Goulet, your host, and you know, I had an interesting experience. So, you know, I wrote my book, Go With Your Gut, and honestly, if I can help people trust themselves more than they trust anyone else, my job is done. So I've often said, here's one way to do it. I've often said, live in the land of something tells me. And what does that mean? Well, we've all said you know, something tells me, and then we finish the sentence, to do something, not do something, whatever. Usually because they're able to say that because they don't have a major attachment to it. We're really driven by our ego and our emotions. And what that does is cause us to have an attachment to an outcome um, because we want what we want in life. And we think we know what is best for us because we want to take care of ourselves. But we really can't make the best decisions from our ego or our emotions. And something tells me when we say that to ourselves, that's coming from your gut instinct. That's coming from your soul. That's coming from that wise place inside of you. So the other day, um, last week I was out of town at the New Media Summit, which was amazing. Uh, Gee whiz, I got to put that out there to as many of you as I can, because if you have any interest in getting on podcasts, starting your own podcast, or continuing on with one you already have going, you want to be part of the New Media Summit. It's a fantastic event where 40 icons of influence People who have successful podcasts are interacting with 150 people who may have a podcast, want to start a podcast, or do have one. They just want to become guests on other podcasts. And it's a love fest. It's the most wonderful event. No one's competing with anyone else. Icons of influence and podcasters and attendees are all interacting over coffee, during lunch, uh, supporting one another d- during the um, the summit. It's just fantabulous. So email me, mary at marygoulet.net, if you want more information, because there is one coming up in February of 2019 in Florida. It's just, anyway. So with that said, I'm away for the whole week in Austin at this event, And I'm like, oh, gosh, I have to pay my mortgage. So I had left a check for my boyfriend to put in the bank and then say, okay, um, go in on Friday and pay the mortgage. See if you can get a hold of this one particular teller because she knows my account really well. Well, she wasn't there. He thinks that the mortgage is paid and tells me that. So then on Monday, I'm going to the bank to do another transaction And I was going to go to the ATM. And something told me, something tells me, you know what? Go in the bank and double check on the mortgage. Make sure it was paid. I'm like, no, I'm sure it was fine. So my ego starts questioning. No, forget it. You're good. Why do you need to do that? But I've learned my lesson. When something tells you, follow up on it. So I park the car. I go in and I see my favorite teller. Karina, I go, hey, Karina, I just want to double check that my mortgage is paid. She goes, well, I see the deposit that you made on Friday, but I don't think so. So she gets the branch manager to help me out. So Lori and I go sit down. She goes, okay, the deposit that was made on Friday went to the mortgage, but then the mortgage company kicked it back. Because the teller did not put the right coding on it. So she calls the mortgage company and they said, you have 38 minutes to pay it and not have a late fee. 
So I'm like, do it. Pay it. If I did not listen to the something tells me, I'd have incurred a late fee and I, that would have been really annoying. So we have something tell me tells me moments all day. Something tells me to turn here when I'm driving. Something tells me to go to the bank before I go to the grocery store. Something tells me to call so-and-so. So do you get what I'm saying? You have that in you. You have that voice. We just have to get used to listening to it. And we always want to justify what we're doing or not doing because maybe we don't want to do something. But if we just really take a moment several times a day, I was um, talking to this, my fabulous therapist. I see her once in a while. It's been a while, but I talked to her the other day just to get ourselves out of our head because we're constantly bombarded with email and text, our to-do list. So what we do is we go up into our head and we're not in our bodies. Now, for those of you who meditate, pray, um, take quiet time, go out into nature, you're probably a step ahead and more in your body. But it's very easy to just go up into our head, not even realize we're not breathing. We, we hold our breath and then all of a sudden, ooh, I need to take a deep breath or I need some air. And then we'll breathe. But breathing is one of the number one ways to get ourselves back into our body. And the minute I did this exercise with her, and actually she calls it vooing, where you just take this low, more guttural, like voo sound, and you hold it for as long as you can, and you do it like five times, you'd be amazed at what you hear your soul tell you. I'm really stuck in my head a lot of times. I'm an, I'm an analyzer. So some people are, their default button is being an analyzer or being an emotional decision maker. So once you find out what your default is, do you overanalyze, overthink, justify, rationalize your way through to a decision? If you know that's who you are, Awesome. If you know that you're more emotionally based, concerned about what other people might be thinking, um, how you feel about something, a lot of people will make decisions or not make decisions because confrontation, conflict, uh, conversation itself is just really uncomfortable for them. And so they would do anything to avoid those feelings. Or they're very sentimental, um, empathic. And all those qualities are good, but they cannot be the driving force when you're making decisions in your daily life. When we're rationalizing, manipulating situations or circumstances or people, that cannot be your primary decision-making option. You We can't make decisions from those places. If we make a decision, let's say, based on something tells me, um, you're taking guidance from your soul. You're taking guidance from inside you, who you are on the most core level, where true wisdom specific to you resides. Then your ego can go on for the ride or your heart. But it has to be led and driven by your soul, which is your gut. That knowingness within you, that trumps everything else. Because we do need to have our intelligence help us along the way of what our gut is telling us to do. Going back to the bank incident, my gut said, go in the bank. My brain said, ask for help. Keep pursuing until you get the exact answer and know what's going on with that account. My heart kicked in because I started to feel bad about myself because, darn it, if I have a late fee, that will really bum me out. So you see, all three are players in any situation. But we need our gut 
to be leading us, our soul leading us. And then our intelligence and our emotional intelligence as well can follow. There's nothing more dangerous than ignoring a gut directive and letting your ego run or letting your heart lead. They say, um, follow your heart, follow your bliss. Sorry, baloney. Not unless it's behind your gut directive. If you have a, duck, a gut directive, then your heart will be doing the right things. Your ego, your mind will be doing the right thing. And life is much easier. If we could all, and I've been working on this myself since 1997, and I have purposely gone against my gut. And every single time I've done that, I've regretted it. Sometimes to minor consequences, and I can still count a few major consequences because I ignored my gut or I said, "Mm, I hear you, but it's going to be okay eventually if I go against my gut. Nope, it isn't. Always comes back to bite you in the tush. So, Check out um, more episodes about this because going with your gut is very simple in theory, very simple to understand, comprehend. But when it comes down to something that is important, such as um, a financial decision, a relationship choice, um. Those are the two big ones that people can go back in memory and say, oh, yeah, I knew that guy wasn't right for me, but I married him anyway. Or I knew I shouldn't have pulled the trigger when I was at a seminar and they offered the $7,500 upsell and I knew I under pressure, I knew I shouldn't have bought it, but I did. Raise your hand if you can identify with one of those types of decisions. So our gut tells us, our gut tells us in the moment first, in fact, we get gut directives all day long, constantly. Should I eat that donut or not? When you're reaching for the donut, your gut is saying, don't eat that donut. But your head is saying, but I'm going to go for a run later. I mean, it's, they're minute Decisions and their humongous decisions. If you can master, but they're all important. They are all important because your gut is talking for you. Your gut is telling you to do something or not do something for your highest and best good. And I don't know if we get that. I mean, it, we almost think like, God is watching out for us. We have a guardian angel. The Holy Spirit guides us. Sure. But are we listening? Do you know that you literally have a voice inside of you that is you, your bigger you, the biggest part of you, telling you what to do and what not to do? But our ego kicks in, our mind kicks in and says, oh, well, historically, this is what works and Or this is what doesn't work, so I'm going to just do that. Or I, you know, we think we know what's best for ourselves. Thinking is the problem. In my book, Go With Your Gut, let me see if it's the first chapter or it's the second chapter. The first chapter, oh, well, the content part of it. Don't follow your heart, and that blows people's minds. Then the next one is don't believe everything you think. We give ourselves so much credit, unless it's textbook, but we make up stuff in our minds about how are we going to land this job or how are we going to find this relationship that we want or whatever that might be. All of the answers come from your gut. They can be carried out by your mind. Followed through with your heart, but never decided by those two, ever. Don't make those decisions. How do you do that? 
through the language of the ego, the heart, and your gut. You have to recognize how you talk to yourself, how you identify what does your ego sound like? What are you telling people? What are you telling yourself? So your ego speaks in sentences and asks a lot of questions and justifies. Conversely, your gut speaks in a statement of five words or less, period. Five words or less. And if the sixth word out of your mouth is because, you're in your head. So you'll get a directive to do something, a, to not do something, or I call it do, don't, delay, wait. And waiting is uncomfortable because we like to do stuff. We like to be definitive, but we get anxious. We want to make things happen. But delay, delay is very powerful when it comes to people being confused. And I think the third or fourth one in here in this book is confusion is a good thing. People look at me like, what? Because when I was coaching, people would come in and they would always say, I'm confused. I don't know what to do. And I said, that's awesome. And they would go, what do you mean? I said, confusion is a good thing. It means you do know what to do or not to do, but you just don't like your options. So you're procrastinating, stalling, waiting for the circumstances to change. So then you can do what you think you want to do. So confusion, when when people clear up their idea of confusion and they just admit, I want to quit my job, but they're nervous about it. And I said, okay, you don't like your job. That's fine. Admit that. Just say, I don't like my job and I know I have to quit. There, pressure's off you. And they'll say, well, what do you mean? I said, you're not confused anymore. You already knew you didn't like your job. Now, let's go back to do, don't, and delay. No one's telling you just because you admitted you don't like your job that you have to quit. You can wait and let your gut give you the right timing, the right circumstances, maybe allow you to get another bit of work before you quit. That's the delay part. Delay is just as important as do and don't. Delay assuages our confusion because confusion is kind of like a mental prison. If you're in denial and saying you're confused, you're wasting time. Clarity and knowledge trump confusion completely so just be clear just admit okay i know i okay i'll tell you a quick story about confusion i was doing a a presentation on this on go with your gut and there are like 20 people in the room um, and i was explaining the language of your mind your heart your gut do don't delay etc at the end of the talk A guy walks directly up to me. Thank you so much. I just realized my marriage is over. And when he said that, I'm like, oh, brother, now that's my fault? That would be terrible. And he goes, no. He goes, I've been in confusion, telling myself I'm confused for years. So this was in August. And um, he told me that. It was almost as if I could see the relief falling off his shoulders. And he seemed okay. He wasn't jubilant. He wasn't depressed. He was just matter of fact. I know my marriage is over. So in February, the following February, he calls me. Hey, let's go have a cup of coffee. So I meet him for coffee. And he said, That day changed my life. It was clear as a bell that my marriage was over. 
I realized it at that talk. He said, but I took my time. I didn't want to rush. I didn't want to be hasty. I wanted to be gentle. I wanted to be careful. So for August, September, October, November, December, January, six months, he treated that decision with respect. He allowed delay to be in play. I think he, we had coffee maybe a week or two after he and his wife separated. So when you are confused, you know what to do. You just don't like your options. He did not like his options prior to that day. So if you have to admit something to yourself, it doesn't mean you have to act on it that second. Let delay kick in appropriately. And it could be an hour, a day, a week, a month, six months. But that sense of clarity around whatever you were saying you were confused about, that clarity gives you a clear mind. But when you're stuck in confusion, you're making up all sorts of stuff. You're making up scenarios that could play out or it's just a drama you're carrying around in your mind. I'm sure he was carrying around, he was conflicted because there was love for this person, but the relationship was not healthy or supportive or whatever it may have been. But to do just admit what it is is power so anytime you are consciously aware of being confused about something know that you know the answer you're you just don't like your options so check that out Oh, and also on Facebook, go with your gut on Facebook. I'm going to be posting something tells me posts of actual times I've actually listened to my gut when, you know, like the bank incident. Something tells me to go in the bank and double check on the mortgage. Something tells me. Powerful. That is really powerful stuff because then Your life is not out of control. You're being guided moment by moment throughout the day. And it's fun because sometimes if you had your plan for the day and it tells you um, change your the organization of your plan and you bump into someone you haven't seen or or someone says call so and so and the second you do they text you by chance, you know, it's more fun to go with your gut. It's more fun to let your soul move you. All right. We'll be right back. Uh, Thanks for listening to The Mary Goulet Show. Cultivate a rich interior and trust yourself. Looking to be a successful entrepreneur? The virtual assistant industry continues to be a top choice for those looking to start their own business. The problem can be how to become a virtual assistant. Many turn to the Bible of the VA industry, the book, Virtual Assistant, the series. And it's the perfect guide for office managers, executive assistants, and other administrative professionals looking to make the transition from employee to successful business owner. Go to vatheseries.com to get your copy today. Do you want to be a professional coach? Are you in business trying to make a real difference with people you manage or work with? Have you started a coaching practice that isn't quite getting off the ground? Get the skills you need to be a successful coach today with the Coach's Training Program from Accomplishment Coaching. The Coach's Training Program will show you how to help others focus and be more fulfilled. 
Whether you want to improve your company's bottom line or create a thriving coaching practice, Accomplishment Coaching can give you the distinctions and practices you need to coach others effectively today. Accomplishment Coaching has spent six years developing a cutting-edge coaches training program that will have you ready to coach people professionally in just 12 months, and you don't have to take time off work to do it. To find out more about the coaches training program, just call 1-888-548-6813. That's 1-888-548-6813. Education, industry experts, back to the basics. Is your company using the Internet of Things to its fullest potential? Enlist the Peggy Smedley Institute and its team of experts to create a customized plan for how to apply the IoT to your specific needs. Learn everything you need to know to achieve tangible business outcomes in today's digital economy. Contact us at 630-933-0844 That's 630-933-0844 or visit learnitiot.com. You've heard me bragging about Progressive Medical Center and how they've helped me feel so much healthier. But one thing, Dr. Agoli, that a lot of people come to you with is just unexplained pain. They just can't get any relief. Why can Progressive Medical Center's Pain Management Center help them? First of all, we have to acknowledge that pain is for real and you've got acute pain and chronic pain. Here's the problem. That acute pain turns to chronic, which is longstanding, and no one's getting to the root cause. There's several key diagnostic components that help us get to the root of what's causing this pain. Is it inflammation? Once we do a thorough evaluation to get the root cause determined if it's structural or if it's a metabolic issue. And this way, we put an individualized program for pain management involving correcting the spine, using certain injections when necessary, and we get our patients out of pain quicker and they stay out of pain because we teach them how to live their life well. Don't let yourself live in pain any longer. Get a hold of Progressive Medical Center today at ProgressiveMedicalCenter.com. Progressive Medical, this is your life, live it well. 